Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll be showing you how to do some basic cell shading. As you can see here, the one on the left is not cell shaded and the one on the right is. And if I change the direction of my directional light here, which is going to be my sun source, you can see that the cell shaded model actually updates accordingly. So to get started, I'm just going to remove the cell shaded model that we have there, make another version of this model, move it over to the side, and now we have two regular models. And what I'm gonna do here is I will go ahead and create a URP unlit shader graph, and I'll call it cell shading. And if you don't have URP currently installed, just go to your package manager, go to the Unity registry, and scroll down until you find Universal RP right here, and click install. I have another video on how to set up the Universal RP, so if you're having issues with that, I recommend you watch that video. Once you have your cell shading shader graph item created, go ahead and right click on it, go to create and material, and I'll just call this player material. And I'll go ahead and go to my character model here and just drag that onto my materials. I also have a separate glowing eye shader that is going on here. This is how this looks. So I'm just emitting yellow and I have post-processing turned on, so that's why they're glowing. Anyway, right now you can see that our character is just completely gray, and that's because we don't have anything in our shader graph yet. So let's go ahead and double-click our cell shading shader graph, and that will open up here. And the first thing we'll want is a texture 2D node and a color node. By default, I'm going to make my color white. And now we can get started by adding some nodes. So the first thing I'll want to do is drag out my texture 2D node, and this will just be like, if our character has a texture that goes along with it for the colors, I will use this. So it'll go into a sample texture 2D node. And if I were to hook this up to base color and just click save, we can go back to our game scene and our character is currently just all white. If I go to select the texture and select my palette for the character, you can see that they are now colored in and they are unlit. Uh, but now we want to get the shadows working. So let's go into our cell shading graph again. And one node that I'm going to add now is a main light direction node. This is going to give the direction of the main light source. And then I will get the normal vector. And I want this to be in world space. And I'm actually going to negate the main light direction. Because if I don't, then the lighting will be in the wrong direction, so I will just negate that. And then we're gonna take the dot product of both of these. And if you don't know what a dot product is, I would recommend Googling it. I don't think I could uh, give a good enough explanation on my own, but essentially you're taking two vectors and multiplying against each other to get a value out. And looking at the Wikipedia page, it is kinda hard to understand. So just know that it's something we need and it has to do with the vectors and angles of the normal vector, which is going to be the vector going straight off of our model and the angle of the sun. So if the sun's coming in this way, normal vector's going this way, we're getting dot product of that and that's returning a single value for us. And I'm just gonna plug this into a remap node and I want it to remap from negative one to one uh, to be zero and one. So I just want these values to be between zero and one here. And now I'm gonna add a step node and I can drag the output of remap into the input here. And you can see here that with the edge set to one, this circle is completely black. But if I start decreasing it, then it's less black. So if I set it to 0.5, you can see it's halfway lit and I will do a multiply here. So I actually want to disconnect the base color from our sample texture 2D, and we can multiply our sample texture 2D by the uh, step node here. So let's go ahead and multiply both of those and hook that up, and that'll give you just kind of the basis of what we're trying to do here if we go back to our scene. And now you can see that the front of our character is lit, but if I go ahead and rotate the sun, the back side where the sun isn't shining is completely black. So that's kind of the foundation of what we're doing here. So if we go back in here, at the end of this multiply, I would also like to do another multiply and multiply by our color node and then feed that into our base color here and save that. Now if we go back here and I were to change the color to red, 
everything is going to be tinted red. I'm just going to keep it on white for now, but that's good in case uh, you don't want to use like a texture for your object. You can just do it based on color and assign it that way. So now we want to get more of these uh, step nodes. So what I would do here is I think eight or nine of them will get you a good result. So I would just do one. I'll just change that value to one and then do negative one, add that together. And I'm going to get rid of this link. And now I will feed this into a divide node and I'm dividing by two because we had two step nodes here. And if I feed that into multiply, this is the pattern that you kind of want to follow here. So I'm just going to copy and paste these in and I'll want this to be like 0.5 negative 0.5, paste another set in, let's do 0.75, negative 0.75, paste another set in, 0.25, negative 0.25. And you can see with each step, we get different uh, levels of shading for the results. And I'll go ahead and do another set down here with zero and I'll do like a 0.99. Uh, but anyway, we'll want to add all of these up. So add, add, and adding here, add here. I will add together these two, and then I can add these together, these last ones, get rid of that. And now I can feed my output into this divide node, and let's see how many one of these I have. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I this uh, this bottom one is going to end up being a highlight, so I'm actually just going to divide by 9 for now. And in fact, I might not even add that in just yet. So I'll delete that. And let's save and go back to our game scene. And now you can see cascading levels of color based on the direction of the light. And that's really all there is to it. Um, I am going to add that highlight in that I had before. So if I go back in here, I need to do something similar to what I did up here. So I am going to actually copy this and paste it down here. And instead of normal vector being rolled, I'm gonna set it to view. And I am going to take the main light direction and split it. And then I want my own combine node. So let's hook up the G to the G and the B to the B. And I want to multiply just the x direction by negative one. So I'll feed that in here and out there, and I'll get rid of this negate. Then I'll take this RGB three output from my combined node, put it into the dot product, and I'll want to put that into a remap node as well. I want it to go from negative one to one to it actually being from zero to one. And I want to feed this into the input of this 0.99 step node here, and then I can add that back in. And that should get us a pretty nice highlight. Um, I'm actually going to do another multiply node here in between adding it in just so it becomes more apparent. So I'll just multiply it by 10 and let's go back in here and we should see that highlight if we, yeah, you see that, uh, that highlight on the front there. So that is pretty much it. That is how you can go about getting yourself some cell shading into your game. I will say the cell shading does look a whole lot better if you add an outline to the character. So I have another video on how to add outlines to models like you see here. I recommend to go watch that uh, because it'll give it more of a cartoony appearance and that might be what you're going for, especially if you're doing cell shading. If you like this video, feel free to leave a comment or like and tell me what you'd like to see next. Also, feel free to subscribe. Most of you are not subscribed. And anyway, thank you for watching. Goodbye.